hello YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian we are doing my September wrap-up and October TBR list combined. Well, we're back to me combining my TBR and wrap-up lists because I frankly just didn't read all that much in September. Things just got away from me. I was editing a lot of videos and like I just didn't read very much. So there really wasn't much of a point in making a wrap-up its own video. <laughs> this is frankly not enough to put in it. So we're gonna combine things. And since September's already over, let's start with wrapping that up before we get into what's on deck for October. First up are books I've already reviewed and there's two of them. I continued on my James Bond read-along series with Dr. No by Ian Fleming. This is book six of the series and it's not like my favorite book of the series, but I do enjoy it for the sheer campiness of it. Uh, it takes place in Jamaica and, you know, Ian Fleming owned a home in Jamaica, so it really shows that how much he like loves the area and everything. It's very immersive as a setting for the story, but um, it, it could have been better in other aspects. Like it's an okay story. It kind of goes off the rails. I'll just say that because I bet you're not expecting James to like fight the Kraken. <laughs> Like, oh boy, does he get into a fight with a giant squid in this? I don't know what to tell you. That happens in the book. I have a full recap on it so you could check that out. But it goes a bit off the rails at times, but it's a fun book in general. So I'm a little bit mixed on my feelings about it. I think overall it's like a 3.5, 3.75 stars. I also continued on with The Vampire Chronicles and I read Prince Lestat and The Realms of Atlantis by Anne Rice. And this is like literally the weirdest book I've ever read. <laughs> like some of the things that happen in this book haunt me. <laughs> A lot happens and basically it says, uh, you know all the other books in this series? Fuck it, none of it mattered. <laughs> in the end. Because it turns out I guess vampires are also kind of aliens in a way. Yeah, there's aliens now. It's a whole thing. I have a whole recap video, but yeah, this one also went off the rails. <laughs> it was, I'm just, there's, I'm haunted. That's all I'm gonna say about it. A lot happened and it was a lot of weird, like more weird than I was expecting. It's like, if I tried to explain the weird in this again, like people would think I'm having a mental breakdown. Like that's how weird it is. But there's a whole recap video so you can dive in, buckle up, and see what happened. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it's the weirdest book I've ever read. It's... I have no words. Next section is like literally everything else I read, so I have three more books to go over. First up, I read Lightbringer by Pierce Brown. This book really took it out of me. Like, I have realized I am no longer a 700-page book girly. I want short ass books. I want a 300 page banger. You know what I mean? <laughs> like 700 is just too much to read. So this took me forever to get through and I think it's also a main contributing reason why I didn't read as much as I thought I would this month. It's because this. It's 700 pages, dear lord. And I'm a little conflicted about this book as well. Like you can see from the tabs here, I tabbed the shit out of it. Like, the writing isn't the issue here. I love Pierce Brown's writing style. I love, like, this really in-depth world he's created in these series. And mind you, this is, like, book six. So, like, th there's a lot of stuff to go over to get to this point. But this book in particular reeks of a bridge book to me where it's just setting up the conclusion. And I did hear originally this whole series supposed to be six books. This book was so effing long, it got split into two books, and this book is still 700 pages long. How long was it before? <laughs> like, oh my word. So there is gonna be one more book in this series, and it's just like setting up all of the little pieces that were necessary to happen so the end makes sense. So, like, I'm not saying it's not good. I did enjoy it. I think it's well written. Um, it's very intricate. At the end of the day, however, it's still just kind of like a war story. I would say if you're a Joe Abercrombie fan, it's kind of like the heroes where it's all one war story over a few days and that's it. And it's very battle strategy and plans and plotting. And it's good, but it's not the most fun thing to read. Same thing here. It's all battle strategy and, and plotting and political machinations. 
and it's good, but not necessarily the most fun thing to read. And also, God damn it, Pierce Brown. Like, I was almost to the end of this book and I was like, oh no, he hasn't killed anybody off this whole book yet. <laughs> so like, my heart, my heart was like, oh no, he's gonna kill someone I like. I know it. And he did. He killed one of my favorite characters and I am not okay. So I will, that has just sealed the deal here where I'm like, yes, it's good, but fuck you because you killed the guy I like. <laughs> so anyway, that's where I am in life. The last couple books I read were both by Kimberly Lemming and I read That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon and a Mistlefoe. So this is books one and 1 1.5 of these Mead Mishaps series and I like them. And this whole month of September was just conflict for me, how I felt about books. Because on the one hand I like it, on the other hand I see the issues. <laughs> so these books in particular, they're really fun. And they're, you know, uh, fantasy, romance, uh, you know, there's orcs and werewolves and like it's very much like Dungeons and Dragons, but with fucking. So <laughs> I do enjoy it. However, these books are very short, which is a good thing because I want a short ass banger. Like that's what I want out of books right now. And that time I got drunk and saved Demon is under 200 pages and then Mistlefoe is a novella. So yes, they're both very short. However, that doesn't give you a lot of time to develop things in the story to make it, you know, wow, this is an amazing book. There's very little of that because this kind of just cuts to the chase. It gets rid of all of those boring middle scenes where like characters have to deal with their conflict and like think about things. It's just like A, B, C, D. There's no meandering in between these plot points which I appreciate because it's just breezy. You can read it all in one sitting, like uh, in a couple hours, frankly, you could just read the whole thing. <laughs> so it's kind of a nice like evening by yourself. You're gonna have some wine and some snacks and just read a pulpy book. So for that element, those vibes, I love it. It's perfect. And if I was going for a more literary vibe. I think it could be longer and it wouldn't uh, hurt the book at all. I will be continuing on in this series just because they're like fun short books. They are not a big time commitment and they're smutty and they're funny. Like that's perfect frankly. So I will be continuing on and they're good. I like them a lot. I gave them both four stars. Can't give them five because frankly they're just not long enough <laughs> to get a five star but they're very fun. Okay so September is officially wrapped. Let's see what's on deck for October. Mind you I have been not sticking to my TBR lists for months at this point. So these are just kind of guesstimates. <laughs> We're gonna like fingers crossed hope for the best here. So first category here are book club books and I have three of them this month. Holy moly. For the vintage lesbian read along we are doing Annie on my mind and this is I think it's kind of YA and it's the first kind of happily ever after sapphic YA romance type of vibe here. Uh, it's a little bit more modern than the previous books we've read, so I'm hoping we enjoy it because right now we're over to two <laughs> in like a finding a book we all like. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this will go well. The live show for this is actually going to be on my channel this month and it's going to be on Monday, October 30th. So just before Halloween, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're all gonna get together, chat about this book, Fingers crossed we like it because we haven't liked anything else we've read so far, but I mean, it could be good. <laughs> Who knows? For the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club, we are going to be reading The Magic Toy Shop. Live show for this will be on Beautifully Bookish Bethany's channel on October 28th? Yeah, 28th, which is a Saturday. I believe it's probably going to be in the evening again. So probably 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll put it on the screen because I'm not exactly sure when it's going to happen, but it'll be that day. And we're all going to dress up. It's going to be our Halloween party. It's going to be a good time. Um, I'm pretty sure this is about a magic toy shop because that's what the title suggests. And I have read nothing about it in the blurb. <laughs> I'm kind of going in blind for it. That's because I want to be surprised, but um, I'm pretty sure something called the magic toy shop is going to be about a magical toy shop. <laughs> It's a vintage book. We're doing OG 23. So all of these books are kind of older versions of like genres we like. So it's a vintage one 
fingers crossed we like it. Uh, we're kind of uh, not doing very well in that book club either this year. One day we're going to have a book club where we all just pick books we all like. It's never happened, but we can hope for the future. Last book club here is my patron and channel member book club, and we are going to be reading The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. This won our poll by only one vote. Every month our polls are so close, like so close. But this one won out this month. I am very excited to read it with all of you. It's, you know, a haunted house kind of a story. Um, there was this house that like murders took place in and then this family buys it to make it a fixer-upper and everyone knows you don't buy the murder house, you're gonna get haunted as shit. But I'm trying to go into this one also without preconceived notion, so I'm trying to go in a little bit blind here. I don't wanna know too much about it before going in because I want the thrills to happen. It's a thriller, I want to be thrilled. So I'm keeping myself in the dark here, but I know it's kind of murder house, haunted house kind of vibes, perfect for Halloween. If you want to join in on the book club, you can consider becoming a channel member or patron. Links are in the description down below. This will be on Friday, October 27th, 5 p.m. Pacific time. We all do a live show together. It's exclusive for channel members and patrons, but I am excited to be reading it with all of you. Next category is read-alongs, and I got two of them. Continuing on the James Bond read-along series, I am going to be doing Goldfinger by Ian Fleming. This is book seven of the series. It's kind of that midway point. And I mean, it's Goldfinger. Like, this is iconic James Bond, if anything is. Like the movie is a chef's kiss. It's still good by today's standards. This one has a really good villain. I'm, I'm just really into rereading this because I've read it once. And honestly, I don't remember enough details about it. I think I just whizzed through it the first time and now I want to like get in and like think about things and be really analytical. Like it's such a nerd thing to be excited for. <laughs> But I am excited to read this one. A full recap will be up on my channel sometime this month. Also on deck, I have Blood Communion by Anne Rice. This is the final book of the Vampire Chronicles. This is it. This is the last one. There's not any more. <laughs> I didn't think this day was going to come because I've been reading these books for so long at this point. It's kind of absurd. But uh, there are more Anne Rice books, so uh, stay tuned. I will be doing some more series from Anne Rice. I will announce those when I get there. But in October, we're doing Blood Communion. The last book, Realms of Atlantis, was so wild that, like, I don't even want to speculate. I don't think I can. <laughs> Every book is weirder than the last. So who knows what's ahead of me in this book. But I also enjoy this kind of relatively short for Anne Rice. Um, usually her books are very long and this one seems kind of breezy, honestly. So, uh, excited, but also kind of bittersweet because it's ending the Vampire Chronicles. It's all done. It's a little bit of a, it's a little sad, but also a little happy. I don't know. There'll be a full recap up on my channel sometime this month as well. Last up, I have three more spooky books I put on this TBR. Who knows if I'll get to them? <laughs> all the rest of the books I have to do, these are optional, but hopefully I will also do them. I put Perfume by Patrick Suskin on this list, mainly because I asked in my previous video, do you guys want to see a Drunk Classics on this? And the response I got was overwhelmingly yes. <laughs> and this book is going to be so dramatic and campy and weird and horrific that I'm like, this is a perfect Drunk Classics to do. So hopefully I am going to read it and film the Drunk Classics video. I'm not sure when it will go up, but it will probably happen in the near future. But I'm hoping I can read this this month because it's going to be just a lot <laughs> to get through. But I am excited to try it out. I also might try to read The Shining by Stephen King. I mean, iconic horror. I, I've seen the movie. I feel like the movie, everyone's seen it at this point. I love the movie. I haven't read the source material. And I have this really cool like edition I got at a library book sale. It's so pulpy and kind of like comic book. I, I, that's a cool edition. I'm so happy I got it. I got it for like a dollar. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I know the basic story because I've seen the movie, but I don't know the story. Um, I know movies take a lot of creative license, so I'm excited for this one. Hopefully I will find time 
to read it because I think it's a perfect kind of Halloween pick. Also, it was in the poll for the channel member book club and it lost by only one vote. So it was almost going to be The Shining. So I'm going to try to read it. Last up, I have Court of the Undying Seasons by A.M. Strickland. This is another standalone fantasy by this author. Uh, this author also wrote In the Ravenous Dark and I loved that book. It's like necromancy but make it pansexual. <laughs> and it was amazing. I love that book. And this one is vampires and I don't know much else. I honestly I didn't care. I knew it was A.M. Strickland. I loved the previous book so much that I was gonna buy whatever the author put out next and then this happened to me next. This one's vampires. So I'm just excited to get into it again. I'm just going in blind at things. I just want to be surprised. I don't want to know exactly what I'm getting before going into the book. But considering I like the author's work so much from the previous one, I think I'm going to enjoy this one. I'm pretty certain of it. It's just, it's just pretty also. The cover's just cool. It's vampires. It's perfect for Halloween season. All right, so that was what's on deck for October. Um, hopefully I'll read them all. I'll read at least five of them. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, I don't know. Uh, what are you reading for spooky season? Do you got any Halloween or horror books on deck for October? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. If you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And if you want cool exclusive content, including early access to videos and a book club, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. Links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.